to be the pools of Bethesda. And in John's Gospel, in the fifth chapter, it's recorded the story of uh, Jesus uh, coming here and uh, healing the man that had been sick for 38 years. The interesting thing about this is this is really where the bloodhounds of hate begin to attack Jesus and they begin to push him to the cross. He's come from Galilee, he's come all the way up, he's come from Bethany, Lazarus has been raised from the dead, uh, he's, he's done many miracles and he's done a lot of miracles on the Sabbath including seven. Seven. There are seven recorded miracles of Jesus on the Sabbath. Now, Sabbath doesn't mean seven. It just happens to be the first day or the seventh day of the, of the week. But seven times Jesus used um, seven, or seven times he used the Sabbath to perform a miracle. And this is one of those events. Um, it's also interesting to note that everything that Jesus has done thus far in the book of John, all five chapters, include water. The first one, remember, was what? In John chapter 2? Turn the water into wine. Turn the water into wine. And then we know he went to Jacob's well, uh, you know, and we know he's, uh, here he's going to use the water here. So this is the story of the healing of, on the Sabbath day. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. We we'll always go up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool. Now, there's a pool of Israel and then a sheep market by the pool of the sheep market. Imagine how close you are to the Temple Mount. One of the things that need, we need is a sheep market. We need a place to buy them. And then we need a place to prepare them, wash them, comb them out, make them prepare them to be sacrificed. The best, the best of our offerings that we would give, we'd give to the Lord. So there is by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Now this is not the pools where the sheep would be washed. The pool of Israel would have been on up further and the, uh, that was where that would be taking place. Bethesda means what? House, House. of Mercy. We have a Bethesda Naval Hospital at mm -hmm. home and that's what its name that's what its name is translated, House of Mercy. And mercy and grace, the numerical number for scriptural is the number five. As Peter said several times on the trip, there were five wounds in Jesus' body when he was crucified. So five, there were five porches here. There were five porticos where, um, in these, these pools. Um, so the scripture says in verse 2, it says, In the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. Verse number 3. In these, or on these porches, lay a great multitude of impotent folk, okay? Sick people, mm -hmm. sick people, of blind, of lame, of withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to stop for just a second. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we in our churches today, we're waiting on a movement to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not going to go visit anybody, and I'm not going to go do this, or I'm not going to go do that. We're just waiting, and sometimes we're waiting for 38 years. Sometimes it's like, well, you know, so-and-so, she does this, or he does that, or whatever, but just waiting. My encouragement to you here at the Pools of Bethesda is don't wait, but also don't kick the door down. Let the Lord, if the Lord provides a door, walk through it, Amen. but don't kick it open. I'm, I'm a product, and maybe you're a product, of kicking a few doors open that shouldn't have been opened. Mm. Amen? Mm -hmm. But I'm also a product of not going through some doors that the Lord had opened for yes. me. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I believe the Lord opened the door when Peter came to us on this trip. Yes. yes. I'm just to the place now where I feel comfortable that Peter and I can sit and talk like we sat over there and play off of each other and say, okay, I know, I know where he's coming from. He knows where I'm coming yeah. from. We don't have any motive except the pure motive. Amen. Amen. There's no, there's no motive. There's no jealousy. It's not like, well, he said that. I don't get to say it. That's not what this is about. It is about feeding you with enough information so that you've got to, you, can, you can make good judgment decisions for your life as you travel the path and not sit around waiting for 38 years mm -hmm. to determine. Now listen, you took the first step. Peter and I didn't. You took the first step when Pastor Tom told you or I told you we were going to come here. You said, you know, I'm willing to invest. I'll go see. But now, you know, 
much is when much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm trying to prepare you for that. Jesus is doing the same thing here. He's, he's getting ready to prepare them for what is going to happen in the future. Verse number four. He's wait, they're waiting for a movement of the water. For an angel would go down at a certain season into the pool and stir or trouble the water. Whosoever then first, after troubling the water, stepped in the water, would be made whole of whatsoever disease that they had. So it was a race game. If the wall, if the waters were, were moving, it was like, I'm going. I'm going to be the first to get to the water. So it would be a race game to see who could hit the water first and get healed. So Jesus came by. A certain man was there which had an infirmity of 38 years. When Jesus saw him live and knew all that he had been now for a long time in that case, he says to him, Wilt thou be made whole? Now, that's King James for, would you like to be healed? Mm -hmm. And my answer to that would be, well, is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> or is, does Billy Graham have a quiet time? Right. <laughs> okay. Do you want to be healed? He, he's sitting there, do I want to be healed? Do you think I'd have been here for 38 years if I didn't want to be healed? But you see, for 38 years, I believe I would have sprinted in front of one person for 38 yeah. years. Okay, I, I maybe so. I don't know his condition, so I'm not, I'm not saying. But I would have sure tried. I'd have got closer than the rest. The impotent man answered him, and he said, Sir, I have no man when the water's troubled to put me into the pool. But when I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. You ever hear somebody like that? Well, I can't sing as good as Kathleen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can hum. Mm -hmm. You can go in that church and hum. All 51 of us can hum the most beautiful melody that you can that you can imagine. In there. Now, we, now we can't sing like Kathleen or Jim, but God will give you what you need to do what you need to do. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yes. yes. He will get. He's getting ready to do it for this man, but he will give us what we need. You know, I um, I I will never forget this. When I was young, and and really after I got out of school and I got into business, well, and I joined the Rotary Club, I remember this really really good. I I hated to speak in front of people. I was so scared to speak in front of people. You? Me? <laughs> Me? Yes. Yes. When we would go around the table and somebody would say, give your name, it was almost like, oh, man, I'd have a lump in the top of my throat, etc. But you know what? I won't go through the events that happened, but all of a sudden, a, a, a tragic event happened in my life. And I went to church, and somebody said, the Sunday school teacher's not here today. He's sick. Could you teach? And I said, yes. And from that day forward... The Lord has given me victory over it. He will Amen. give you victory over what you need to do. That's Amen. what Moses said. Moses said, how can I go tell them? He said, listen, quick gripe and Aaron will tell them for you. Go on. Okay? And, and, it, and let's just make sure that we don't make excuses. This man was making excuses. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. I have nobody to take me down. And by the, besides that, if Bobby took me down, by the time I get there, Wilma's already there in front of him. <laughs> She's faster than I am. Okay? So, Jesus said to him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Jesus didn't sit there and say, Well, everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. One of these days you're going to get... He said, If you want to be healed, rise up, take your bed, and walk. Claim victory. Now, listen. I know a man standing right here who claimed victory yesterday. James. Yes. He's the gentleman that's showing that's making the video for you to watch. Yesterday, he's had victory, but the enemy sometimes will make try to rob steal the victories that you already have. Yes. And you go back to the same rock that gave you the victory. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's the only way we can have victory over these these any situation in our life. Jesus said, Rise up, take your bed and walk. In verse 9, I love it. And immediately the man was made whole. Not just in a while. And have you ever witnessed a miracle? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And really given the Lord the miracle? Mm -hmm. Instantly you know that God has done it. Amen. Man has nothing to do with it. It is the power of God. It was the power of Jesus Christ that had the power to do that. Immediately he was made whole. And what did he do? On the Sabbath he took up his bed and he walked. 
and on the same day was the Sabbath day. Verse 10, the Jews therefore said to him that was cured, is it not the Sabbath day? In other words, he walked out, let's assume he walked out towards St. Stephen's Gate or Lion's Gate that way, and he's carrying his sleeping bag. Hey, where are you going? Is, are you not aware that today is the Sabbath day? That's the question that's being asked. Are you, not, are you not aware? Is today not the Sabbath day? Is it not lawful for you to carry your bed? See, they were majoring on the minors. Majoring on the minors. He answered them and he said, He that made me home, he said, Is it not lawful to carry your bed? He answered them, He that made me whole or healed me, the same said to me, Take up thy bed and walk. And I imagine him saying, don't you understand, for 38 years I've been laying over there. It is the first time I've ever been able to walk to this gate. You don't understand. I mean, why are you asking me about the Sabbath day? And that's the whole message that I'm trying to tell you about the Sabbath day. Jesus was trying to say, I don't want you dis to disregard the law. I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. It is, it is, but you're majoring, you're majoring on the minors. You, so he, he continues to say, verse, 11, verse 12, they ask him, what man is that that said to you, take up your bed and walk? Point him out to me. Tell me which one he was. Verse 13, and he that was healed wist not who it was. He didn't know who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away into a multitude. Jesus kind of dispersed himself into the crowd. He said, I don't see him. I don't see him. I, he, was, he was tall, good looking, and his face was bright. I, I don't know. I, I don't know which way he went. That was my interpretation. <laughs> Afterward, or later on, Jesus found the man. And he found him in the temple. I wonder what he was doing in the temple. <laughs> Praising the Lord. Amen. Yeah. After him, he found the man in the temple and said, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto you. Please listen to this. He healed him physically. God can heal you physically before you become a child of his. God can do anything. He created you before you were a child. He allowed us to have breath in our lives. But he said, listen, there's another problem that you have to deal with. Even though I've healed you physically, there's a problem that will not, that won't turn out so well if you don't deal with the sin issue. If there is someone here, I don't know that, or if you know someone who's 99% sure they're forgiven, they could be 100% lost. Figure out a way for you to find him. Figure out a way to help your friends find him. Don't let them die alone. Everybody's going to have eternal life. It just depends on where we're going to spend it. My challenge to you is take inventory as we walk the next couple of days through this city and say, where am I in relationship to you? Would Jesus have this talk to you if he healed you? Would he have this talk with you and say, hey, there's still something that's not right. And it's not, a, not something you're doing at work or it's not that. He said, there's still a core issue that you haven't dealt with. If there's a core problem, don't be embarrassed. Don't say, well, I've been on this trip for a week now. I could never. That, listen, don't let the devil lie to you. You deal with what you deal with, and, and I will deal with what I need to deal with. But don't let someone talk you out of what you need to deal with. Amen? Just like this man here was trying to be talked out of. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the other things will be added to you. Don't try to add the other things before you secure your, your um, oxygen mask first. Okay? So afterward, Jesus said, Go sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus, Yahshua, Joshua, that Amen. healed me, and when, which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus, and from that day on they sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath. You see, God wasn't a part, he's not a part-time God. He's an all-time God. Amen. He's a full-time God. He works the night shift. He works the morning shift. He works the break shift. He's, he's always there seven days a week. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful to be here at the pools of Bethesda. We're thankful that you have preserved the scriptures for us to be able to stand here and read. I'm proud, Lord, to be in a free country, a sovereign nation right now, that I can stand on this uh, concrete pillar and read the gospel according to John from chapter 5. 
Now, Father, help us not to sit around the pools for 38 years. Help us to take inventory. Help us to seek out our friends who we know uh, may not have the same joy and the same peace that we have according to the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, as we go from this place, etch into our minds each spot that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.